Good morning. Um, we're, we're going to hear SCR 26 and 36 at the same time because they're both, they're identical actually. So if Senator Moon and McCreary would want to come forward, we'll start and hope we get a quorum here soon. Good morning. Good morning, Senator. Thank you for he hearing Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 26. I'm State Senator Tracy McCreary from Senate District 24 in St. Louis County. SCR 26 resolves that the Missouri General Assembly support the right of consumers to know the origins of their food. The SCR also supports the use of country of origin labels and urges our U.S. Congress to reinstate mandatory country of origin labeling. A little bit of backstory on this. In 2008, the U.S. Congress overwhelmingly passed mandatory country of origin labeling for muscle cuts and ground meat sold at retail, requiring meat produced from imported livestock or imported boxed meat to bear a label different from meat produced from U.S. born, raised, and slaughtered livestock. Congress repealed that country of origin labeling for beef and pork in 2015. So between 2008 and 2015, there were a lot of things going on at the congressional level. Um, so that mandatory labeling was repealed by Congress in 2015, which kind of brings us to where we are today. Missourians and Americans, I believe, should have the right to know where their meat products come from. Labeling products with their country of origin gives a competitive advantage, I believe, to Missouri farmers and also American livestock producers because consumers prefer to support American businesses. Year to date for 2024, our U.S. Department of Agriculture reports that over 384 metric tons of fresh beef and over 18,000 metric tons of processed beef and 18, over 18,000 metric tons of fresh pork and over 26,000 metric tons of processed processed pork have been imported from other countries and that's just as of this weekend in 2024 in the United States. The top importing countries in order are Canada, Australia, Brazil, Mexico, and New Zealand. I truly believe that consumers have the right to know which countries they're buying their meat from and I'm happy to take any questions but I also know I have some experts here to testify as well and I will turn it over to my colleague. Thank you, Senator McCrary. Uh, I think you did a good job over uh, an overview there. I'm Mike Moon. I represent the Missouri 29th Senatorial District. And I share the concern of the Senator from uh, the McCrary District. I can't say that, really, can I? You can say my name in here. Yeah, OK. I so I'll just call her Tracy. Yeah. So there are gentlemen and ladies here? Yes. And, and the, OK, good. In the hearing room. That's great. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, let me just ask a basic question. When, when you go to the store and you purchase a product, don't you kind of want to know where it's from? I think most would say yes, especially when we're ingesting that. Unless you're buying from a farmer, someone who grows that particular product, you may not know where that product originated. And, and I think it's important as, as you talk to people, um, they will also signify the importance by their answer that they want to know exactly where their, their products are coming from. And I think that's especially true with uh, beef and pork. You know, we have requirements for chicken, mm -hmm. fish, fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Already they require the, the country of origin labeling. And you, you can go buy, I just bought some last week, we bought some uh, raspberries, and you see exactly where they're grown. So um, why not pork and beef? Well, I believe it started with the World Trade Organization years ago when uh, I think they saw it as a financial detriment to actually label the country of origin because it was going to hit their, their pocketbooks. Well, that's not the best answer. And so I think that um, what Senator McCreary and I are pushing here is that we just have the truth on the labels. Now, you will talk to a, a lot of producers, and I think you'll you get a lot of different answers as well, but I think the bottom line is Americans, Missourians, want to know where the food comes from. Senator um, McCreary outlined a lot of the important points in these uh, resolutions, they are the same. And uh, on page one, you'll find in the one, two, three, four, five, six, six paragraphs there that um, 
the WTO was, was kind of behind this push where uh, they opposed the labeling. Uh, I, think, I think it's high time that we reverse that. This is just urging the uh, U.S. Congress to take action. When you have a product on the top of page two listed as product, product of USA, that's a little misleading because when a, um, a head of cattle, for example, comes into the United States from Brazil or Canada or Argentina or uh, Namibia, they um, are then labeled as a product of the USA when they're, they're packaged. That's not right. I know there's a financial incentive for those guys. Uh, that should not be the, the primary motivation. Uh, in the next uh, third paragraph on second, page two talks about the technological advancements that we, we have uh, in our states and our nation. And there's no reason in the world why they can't label properly where these foods originated. Uh, in the next paragraph, it talks about having the country of origin labeling would benefit farmers and ranchers and workers and meat packers because it allows them to identify, again, where that product comes from. And one thing it left out was the consumers. This is great for the consumers because we all want to know exactly where that comes from. So I, I hope you'll see the benefit of this as well. It's, uh, it's easy to urge our congressional delegation to do this, and I think that it's high time that we have a reversal of this particular practice. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, does anyone on the committee have a question? Seeing none, um, I guess we'll take, is there someone here to testify in favor? Yes, we have witnesses here to testify. Thank you. Okay. So if the first one, first one would come up. And um, be sure you fill out a witness form if you would and leave it and also introduce yourself. I'm Freddie Keaton and I am the president of the Independent Cattlemen of Missouri. Uh, we are definitely in favor of this resolution. The senators both alluded to uh, lots of facts about how we've had MCOOL in the past and how it was repealed and they referred to WTO, you know, they filed a lawsuit against the United States forcing us to repeal it. There is legislation in Washington, D.C. It's been there for two or three years. It's needing support, but it deals with that. It would navigate a way that we would avoid the WTO lawsuit and it gives time for impl implementation. So. I'm definitely in favor of this, and we need to put pressure on our Washington leadership to pass this bill. Uh, you can see it today in our market. First and foremost, it's a consumer issue. I believe every consumer deserves the right to make an informed decision. If they want to buy beef from Brazil, that's their choice. If they want to buy it from an American producer, they should have that choice also. Right now, they do not have that. Two weeks ago, the USDA had a rule change with their product of USA label, and it's sta in, in stating that the reason for their rule change was they discovered that it was harmful to the consumer, the way the product of USA label was read, and it was harmful to the producer because it reduced market share. They openly admitted that it hurts our market and they openly admitted that they were defrauding the consumer. Because like Senator Moon said, prior to that, they could ship meat in here, repackage it, and put a product USA label on it, whether it come from Africa, Brazil, or wherever it came from. So they have changed that rule, not implementing it till 2026. So now, we are urging that we do mandatory country of origin labeling. Big Ag will tell you that it's too much of a cost and all of this, <clears throat> but there is a thing called lot tracing, and in these packing plants, they have to attach lots to each product so they can trace it, so they know exactly where that product come from. Why can't they not just pass it on to the consumer and let them know? It's not an added cost. It's not added work. It's already done, it's already there. They're just trying to deceive the consumer. And they're trying to take our market share away. Right now we have the lowest cattle numbers since the 1950s. Okay? 
everybody's saying it's a bull market, everything's in your favor. Well, guess what? They're ramping up imports every day. Live imports from Mexico are filling our feed yards. Brazil's sending more and more beef over here every day. They use that to manipulate and control our supply, therefore controlling our market, making it harder and harder for a producer like me to be profitable. I am asked to compete with countries that do not deal with near the regulations or restrictions that I do, have a far less cost of production than I do, and I'm asked to compete with them on price alone. I'm not allowed to dif differentiate my product. How's that fair? The United States producer makes the best beef in the world. We can send it overseas, and we send our name with it. If you go to Japan, it will say American-made beef. Any country that we import to, they put product of USA on it, and proudfully so. Why can't we do it here? Canada, one of those countries in that lawsuit with the WTO, guess what? They label their beef country of origin because they're proud of the product they produce. They get to differentiate. I want the American consumer to have the right to make an informed decision. If they want to support me, they can. If they have to shop on price and have to buy something cheaper, that's, that's their decision, that's their right. But I want them to have that choice. I want to have a chance to stay in business. We're losing 15,000 producers a year, cattle producers in the United States. You want to know why? Because it's not profitable enough. Aging population, people are retiring, but there's no young people coming in. We have to make it a viable market, a competitive market, and give us a chance to produce. And that's all I have. Thank you, Senator May. I'm just curious, and you know, you may not know this answer, you may, but I'm trying to figure out, even if it's federal, we can still, can we in Missouri make it a requirement that it's labeled USA if they're selling it in Missouri, if it comes to our state? Well, I'm not a, an attorney and I'm not a legislator, so I don't understand how federal and state laws work together. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you this, Missouri has a law on the books that requires it, mm. has had since 2002. They don't enforce it. Mm. I would think that yes, we can, because those retailers should have knowledge of where that product came from because of lot tracing. Mm -hmm. If you talk to grocers and retailers, they will tell you they know where it comes from. It's shipped to them and it has it, the information on the case. All they have to do is put it out in the meat case, but they don't because they don't, they're not forced to. But to answer your question, it would probably take somebody smarter than me to answer that to see if it would work. But I believe in states' rights, so. All right, any other questions? Seeing none, thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Do we have someone else here in favor? Come right, come right on up here. My name is Ken Walken. I'm with Independent Cattlemen in Missouri also. The senators have done a great job of explaining the details. Uh, I'm a producer. Our association is 100% volunteer. We don't pay anybody. We split the bills equally. We have a membership that's across the state. Uh, what we're into it for, uh, I'm third generation cattle raiser. I have two sons at home that I'd like to see continue it. Uh, my advice to them was go get a real job, something that pays. You know, they're both college educated. Uh, my son came home for Easter. He says, Dad, you know I've got six years in. He said, I've got 14 more till I come home. And I said, well, it's time to make some noise. The playing field is uneven. Our product is the safest, best product in the world. They can all attest to it. The case about enforcing Missouri's MCOOL, it's my understanding 15 other states are doing this. My family, uh, 
like I said, being the third generation, my father-in-law was a Senate administrator here for 30 years. He, he let me into the farming business. He said, you handle the farm, I'll do the work. So he, he spent time here. I'm concerned that my kids can't support this. 2014, when we had him cool, from my experience, we sell steers, heifers, 550 pounds, 600 pounds when we sell them. We do it twice a year. We've only got two times a year to gain, to sell our product. When MCOOL hit the first time, we averaged $1,400 a head, which was the highest price we'd ever had. As a producer, growing the best product, taking the safety protocols, raising our Angus, you know, putting the work in. A year later, when it was recalled, that dropped to a thousand. The last ten years, it's averaged seven to eight hundred dollars a head. Just recently, it has come back up, but everything else has come up. Everybody says, "Well, you're you're, you're getting good prices now." Well, our diesel fuel is four times higher. My, fertilizer bill is six times higher than mm -hmm. what it was. There's no money in it. How can you tell your youth to come home to the farm and raise cattle? It, it just doesn't make sense. It's my turn. I'm going to make some noise while we can. I want to open some eyes. Uh, we raise the safest beef. The, uh, the, the things we have to do that we can and can't give shots for, can't, you know, right now is the perfect time of the year. The grass is growing. Our spring calves are hitting the ground, the flyers are popping up. You care for every one of those calves. Every one of those hit the ground, you look at them, and you, you're making sure they're, they're not snotty noses. You want to make sure their ears are up. It's just like kids, every year. To pass that on to somebody, that's, that's a blessing. And that's, that's all we're trying to do is make this a viable industry to where we can pass it on to the next generation. We're importing cattle from countries that have little to no restrictions. They have diseases that the United States has wiped out, but these other countries, can, we can still import it and put that USA label on it. I think the label from my beef that I raised should mean USA, not Africa, not Brazil, not Mexico. That label should mean I did it. You should be able to tell different. Do you want to buy beef from any of those countries? That's your choice. I want them to know the difference in what I raise and what my family raises. And I appreciate the time. Thank you to the senators for bringing this up. Thank you for your testimony. Do you have any questions? Thank, thank you very much. <clears throat> is there anyone else here? To t yeah, there is. Howdy, y'all. My name's Tim Gibbons. I'm with the Missouri Rural Crisis Center. We're a statewide farm and rural membership organization. We represent thousands of cattle producers across our state. It's a pleasure to testify after those fine gentlemen. It's exactly what we're hearing from our members who raise cattle. Um, Missouri's home to 43,543 cattle operations, second only to Texas per the 2022 USDA Census of Agriculture, Missouri lost 10,000 cattle operations between 2017 and 2022. Let me say that again, in the last five years, not including 2023, which was a drought and liquidation year, we lost 10,000 cattle operations. We've lost 21,000 cattle operations in Missouri in the last 20 years, and the United States in the last five years has lost 150,000 independent cattle operations. In 2023, the U.S. imported 3.7 billion pounds of boxed beef, billion with a B, and 2 million live cattle. The meat does not have to be labeled where it is born, raised, and processed. Four corporations control over 85% of the U.S. beef industry. JBS from Brazil is the biggest. They're also second in pork, just behind Smithfield. And they also own Pilgrim's Pride Poultry. So they um, are major players in three proteins. So their, their ability to ma manipulate the market, not only in one protein, but in multiple proteins. At the request of a broad coalition of farmer, rancher, consumer, commodity, faith-based, and rural groups, the 2008 Farm Bill passed mandatory country of origin labeling. It was implemented March of 2009 and started a steady increase of cow-calf profits. But under pressure, pressure from the multinational meat companies, 
the multinational importers exporters and because of corporate lobbying into the world trade organization which is an unelected bureaucratic corporate controlled group uh, in 2015 congress repealed mandatory country of origin labeling for beef and pork and after that repeal in december 2015 we saw the biggest one year drop in cattle prices ever in a marketplace without cool imports allow multinational meat packers to manipulate the market and pay u.s cattle farmers less and make consumers pay more. Consumers overwhelmingly support country of origin labeling. Meat packers already can provide this common sense information. They have systems tracking voluntary market, marketing attributes like certified Angus, grass-fed, and organic, and USDA grading traits like select choice and prime. While cool would require meat packers to maintain information on the origin of the livestock, it does not require new infrastructure. With mandatory cool, American consumers are able to choose and support U.S. American farmers and ranchers, and it facilitates fair competition by providing accurate information in the marketplace. As uh, the gentleman before me uh, mentioned, a bipartisan bill has been introduced in Congress. It's called the American Beef Labeling Act. Uh, the main sponsor is Senator Thune from South Dakota. Um, it would address World Trade Organization concerns regarding man mandatory cool direct the US, United States Trade Representative and Secretary of Agriculture to determine the means by which they should implement mandatory cool. Um, just to be clear, there was some news about, about cool in the news over the last couple weeks. Uh, the United States Department of Agriculture, there was a loophole in cool that allowed imported beef or imported meat to be repackaged in the United States and be labeled as product of the United States. So that 3.7 billion pounds could go on the grocery store shelves as being labeled a product of the United States. USDA just closed that loophole in the next 40 days it's supposed to be, and then there's some implementation period. So that's one point. Another point is you'll hear from corporate ag, well, we import certain types of meat and we export certain types of meat so we can you know, fulfill demand. The reality is they're manipulating the marketplace through imports and exports. They control a vast majority of the, of the meat and protein in this country. Um, we're opposed to corporate control and monopolistic and oligopolies controlling our markets. Um, so, uh, and that's it. That's it, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you very much, it was an abrupt ending. We love, we love abrupt endings. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you for that. Does anyone have a question? Seeing none, thank you I for your testimony. I appreciate you very much, thank you. <clears throat> anyone else to testify in favor? Anyone here to testify against? Anyone for informational purposes only? All right, seeing none, do you have any closing remarks? Thank, thank you both for bringing forward your legislation. So that concludes our committee hearing for today. Thank you for being here.